here we are, David Adorno Sales Podcast. Awesome. Grace Vance. Oh, and the, Happy to the, be here. Year, is it a year ago in October? No, it's a year ago last month that we met in, in Dallas. Yeah. Oh, man. Because we met at, what did we meet at? MDM? Right. 2019. Yeah. Uh, no, 18 it would be. Something. It's been a while. <laughs> so, what's been happening? I haven't seen you since then. It's been a while. Oh, work, you know. <laughs> Me, I started this podcast. Yeah. 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 I've got, I clearly have podcast equipment. I haven't started using them yet, but I've got them. Right. Uh, nice. Let's see. We've got a book in the works. I've got three podcasts that we're working on designing to put out. We've got a bunch of clients that we're helping in different spaces. Uh, I've got a couple digital courses that are coming out soon. Um, and then normal FOA stuff, man. Just dealing, dealing with Such stupid. The- <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So you're not just like me. You're designing your podcast. I just, you know, made a pretty little screen on Canva and jumped online and started talking. <laughs> You know, I go in a really kind of free form, just kind of, you know, I had the, the whole AFID ID team. That's something I've gotten involved with is uh, Cody Rain. And oh, it's sweet. AFID, you know, man, masterclass. So uh, that was one of my first, well, my eighth and ninth episode was pretty much the whole team came on and we were just kind of talking and throwing ideas around and stuff. So it was yeah. kind of interesting. Cool. So, so what about you? How about, uh, like I said, this is mainly, I try and uh, hope that I'm reaching, you know, people that are out there working, you know, okay. and like I said, and, and while I was waiting, it was like, you know, you, this is for you guys who wake up and the alarm clock goes off and you're like, oh no, mm-hmm. I got to do this again, <laughs> you know, to try, you know, cause we don't wake up like that, right? You don't wake up like that. I don't, you know? I mean, and, not know, unless I had one too many the night before, but... Well, yeah, there's reason then. There's a good reason. But these guys, I feel, you know, I know when I was, doing, you know, that long talk went off and I'm just like, oh, no. You know, I'm just working for the J-O-B, you know, the jerk-off boss, you know, that's oh, what I yeah. talking about. So... Now today, that's actually kind of funny that you bring that up because today I did not want to get out of bed this morning. But really? it wasn't because I don't love what I do. It's because I was up mm-hmm. until like five last night for the third night in a row. Right. So right. this morning comes around. I'm like, sweet Jesus, I just need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a nap. <laughs> he was like, I can't nap. My son's got to go to chorus today. <laughs> and there you hence, go. hence the energy drink. <laughs> I am this constantly, is, this is one of the, 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 the constant pictures you see on my podcast, coffee. Yeah, coffee's a good one. Coffee's a diuretic, though. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why I only have this for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. So tell me about, tell me about like how you've built this podcast like what are what's the message we're trying to get to all these people is it is it how to become how to go from employee to ceo what's kind of the idealism yeah well at least you know employee to solopreneur you know okay. how to uh get to the point that you go in there like i, I love that the, i forget what, what commercial it was but uh you know the scene is is girl is walking in, she's holding the cake and she's got this ear to your grin. She's just completely happy. She goes in the conference room and she drops the cake on the, on the counter and they, they pan into the cake and it says, I quit. <laughs> you know? So that's the thing, uh, you know what I'm saying? After that, you know, we'll probably develop, you know, once, cause hopefully someday soon, you know, we'll have some of the, you know, nine to fivers that'll come in and yeah. we'll talk about, you know, their woes and everything like that. I'm in the early stages. I never really use my YouTube account, so I got a whole four subscribers right now. <laughs> I don't like, use mine for anything but uploading stuff. Like yeah. I use it to I use it to host course material. Right. Right. So like I use the unpublished or unlisted section a lot. Right. But I almost never use YouTube for what I should I really should get on that bandwagon. I just haven't really? done it. Because I use LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I use all of those religiously. Oh, yeah. And but YouTube, I just I'm slacking on YouTube. I'll be honest. I need to get my YouTube game up. Yeah, I got I got a document I could send you that it can help. <laughs> help. Are you good with SEO? That's yeah. basically what it's about. 
It's yeah. called the uh, three valve Game. algorithm for yeah. method ID. And gamification works really well on YouTube. But yeah. Where we just What's haven't put it. <clears throat> gamification. Mm -hmm. So it's a type of aspect or thought processes when you're talking about marketing or client acquisition that makes the prospect, the buyer, the end user have mm -hmm. some kind of reward like a game. So when we're talking about like, for instance, credit cards, use it all the time. Gamification on credit cards are like earn miles or 3% cash back on every purchase or rack up 50,000 points and you get this or enter to win this. It's a reward system, basically. Uh, Matt Ganzak actually built out a new program. I think it's called My Credits, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. Yes. That's, a game. That's gamification. I actually, I actually have like 5 or $6 on that platform. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so, so I never put in my information, so it's like, you know. Oh. Definitely go back and watch because he's really good. So, I yeah, that's gamification. More. Yeah, sounded kind of like lead magnet kind of deal too. Which, you know, except a little bit more advanced, maybe. Sort of, kind of. Gamification is about turning the prospect's journey into a quote unquote game. Right. Now, rather than them coming in and saying, "Oh, I want this product," so I'm going to put my information in, talk to this person, buy this product. Now it's, I want this product. I'm going to put my information in. Ooh, I have a chance to win something. Or, oh, I got recommended for this. Or, oh, I got sent over here. While that process is going on. And then at the end of it, they're like, cool, I got my product. Oh, right. and I've got 20,000 points. Neat. Pretty cool. That's a nice concept. I like that. So let me get back to uh, the program here. Tell us about your journey. Tell us about how you started. Oh, like which time? You were <laughs> what, was, what was it like when you were a nine to fiver? And Which time I've, uh, let's see, I've started over three or four times. Really? Yeah. Tell us about that. Cause that's kind of, <clears throat> too, you know what I'm saying? Like even Ryan has talked about it. You know, he, you know, let's made see. it big in loans and then he went to jail. He came out and did it again. <laughs> lost his license. You know, they so, know that happens too. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you're going to deal with some shit. <laughs> it, it's hard being poor. It's hard being wealthy. Why not pick the latter? You know, it's, I mean, if it's going to be just as difficult to live either way, why not live with more resources and opportunity? Not, not to say that the hardened dollar is everything, but the hardened dollar does mean you have more opportunity to do more good. You can give back to charity more. You can help hire more people. You can help inspire more people. You can reach more people. And that's honestly because of the dollar, whether or not you like the dollar for the dollar itself, it does give you opportunity. Right. <coughs> so be prepared for that. Um, like I said, <coughs> I've started over a few times now. So this company, uh, funnel driven LLC, my current one is my second company that I've owned my third time starting over from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I mean scratch, I mean, when I started this company as $57,000 in debt and had about $14 in my pocket. Yeah. Uh, and luckily I had friends and family that were like super supportive of it. And they're like, Hey, if, if you screw it up, you screw it up. You're right here. So, <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, it's an interesting journey. I think the biggest thing for me and this is, I'm a big fan of transparency. Okay. So if, if I go a little on a tangent, you can tell me to shut up. <laughs> but, it's a uh, free forum. So <laughs> for me, it's really, I don't like being told what to do by somebody that one hasn't done what I've done. Mm -hmm. Two doesn't have the same knowledge or expertise that I have. And three is a boss, not a leader. If you're, if you're going to sit on an ivory tower and yell commands at me, you can guff. Okay. <laughs> right. It's, that's not my forte. Uh, so I ended up throughout this process, uh, cause I've been a 1099 for hell. I haven't been paid as a W2 in <sighs> 10 years. Wow. I haven't been paid as a W2. I was a 1099 for a few companies. So I wasn't self-employed right away. And right. I didn't have a company right away. That's been kind of an, ev of an evolution. Mm -hmm. 
but I was, I were, I've worked every job you can possibly think of. I was a lifeguard for my first job. Then I was a lube tech, a mechanics tech. At one point I was a gemologist, uh, sold diamonds and encrustments, sold cell phones and telecom, and then B2B communications for AT&T and Verizon, did customer service and tech support, uh, flipped cars for a little bit, uh, did ice damming and roof repair. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Sounds like hustle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it was kind of this... Do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was doing what you had to do, but it was also like, I was trying to figure out where I was happy, I guess. And I love the sales game. I love helping people. So the, those were kind of a, a thing. Uh, but it always seemed like I either got restricted on capabilities, like the company would only let you do so much before they stopped rewarding you. Or we capped out and then we were like, well, shit, what are we doing now? And so it'd go on to the next thing. So in 2013, 2014, uh, I opened my first company. Uh, and this is a prime example of like <clears throat> getting knocked on your ass mm -hmm. and just dealing with it. The first company was a financial services and insurance company as well as business on brokering. And in 2017, uh, I left that industry. Okay. Now, I enjoyed it at the beginning. Uh, I, it was the helping people aspect that I liked and it had some sales aspects to it, but it was by no means easy. Okay. I'm in the second cheapest state in the nation for insurance. You had to sell a piss ton of fucking insurance to make anything. Now above that, there were a bunch of company changes for my primary appointed company. Uh, and what I mean by company changes is when I came into that company as an appointed agent, uh, right. basically both districts got fired. Like there, there was nobody in this state that was worth a damn. And then I was kind of just left to my own, my own fruition, kind of stumbled through it, spent a lot of time on the phone with customer service, just asking questions, having them do a lot of stuff and kind of made it work. <clears throat> uh, moved offices about four or five times over those about four or so years uh, had a couple employees come in and out, had some sales guys come in and out, had a secretary, uh, several times over, uh, and then life kind of lifed. Okay. Uh, <coughs> that ended up, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Good. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Li life did its thing. It lifed. Right? Mm -hmm. And towards the end of 2017, um, uh, there were, I've got to be selective of what I say. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there were some non couth things that the company had done, was doing that my agency at the time was quote unquote made Patsy for. Okay. Uh, and it all stemmed from really the same two things, lack of support, lack of enforcement, lack of notification. Okay. So when like, say an appointment company is like, Hey, we we've changed a policy or we no longer offer that. If you don't fucking tell anybody about it, nobody knows that that's changed. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so that ended up leading down to a forceful yet mutual decision to break our appointment contract. So I was no longer representing them. I closed that agency split up the parameters of the rest of the company and then kind of wanted to figure out where I wanted to go. And at this time, um, basically everything that I knew, like in my life, completely right. crumbled. Uh, so like lost a relationship, <laughs> lost a house, uh, was having some financial issues at that time because of the crumbling situation, uh, was trying to save a relationship, was moving, was... Uh, Everything was coming in at once. And so I took a little breather, took a little time off. And I'd always been doing marketing, okay? Uh, I used it to build that company to, I think it was, I think it was like 400,000 a year in premium yield. Nice. Uh, I used it to, and I started that from scratch. I started it with no money, just kind of started it one day. Right. 
Uh, I use it to build several other companies. I've used it for when I was in a sales rep. I studied it as a minor in college. So it, it was always a consistent and I've always liked it right. because it let me do a couple things. One, be creative Two, help people. Three, there was a sales aspect to it and four, see tangible results for somebody. So when somebody was like, Hey, I need help doing this. I could physically see, okay, it's working. Right. And so I've always enjoyed it. So I was tinkering around. I actually kind of fell into doing this as work. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was, it was October 1st to 17, like right after I decided, Hey, I don't want to be in insurance or financial services anymore. I still had my licenses. I still had all the contacts, connections. I had very loyal clientele that were willing to come with me if I decided to stay in. Uh, I just wasn't happy there anymore. Okay. So I leave that industry behind. I was taking kind of a breather, trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, and then it was the decision, do I go work for somebody or do I do another thing? Right. And so I decided, well, people are always going to be hiring. No matter, no matter what happens in my life, somebody somewhere is always going to be looking for an employee. So I was like, screw it. I'll try it. And it was actually a culmination of kind of a really dark place, like in my life. And then seeing some of Stuman's stuff and, my history in just playing around with it and some friends that I'd made online that culminated into this company really starting under its name. Cause at this point I was still a 1099 for social Paragon. I had made some affiliations with some funnel guys and some marketing guys down in California right. and I was still doing it myself, but I didn't really know what direction to go in. So FC comes around and I'm like, you know what? I'll I'll see. And so take a look at it. And it was like, I don't know. It was like four days later I had my first client and they got good results. The partnership that I set them up with for fulfillment was doing good. And weirdly enough, it ended up being something that all along I knew I loved doing, but I never really dedicated a whole lot of time to. So it, I mean, now we're here, it's two years later and we're in three countries, got a bunch of stuff going on. We're dropping a, I mean, I've got a book in the, in the works right now with Hillary. She's a rock star, by the way, if anybody needs to get a book written, hit up Hillary Jostrom. She's a gangster. Uh, I was actually just uh, texting <laughs> her on Instagram. Cause I saw she put up a picture. She's in New York city. Yep. I'm like, wait, why? Why? Mm-hmm. I, 20 minutes away, 40 minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> but she was already at the airport, so I caught it too. Unfortunately, yeah, was, that would have been awesome to, to meet up with her. Yeah, so. she was in New York for a few days. I know Tom got to see her. Uh, right. they, she went and got a New York tattoo, and it was really nice. just FaceTime. But. Right. Very cool. So three businesses – Employed each time, right? At least 1099 or? Yeah, so pretty much Mm -hmm. everybody in this company right now is a 1099. Uh, No, no, no. I'm talking about about you in between. You said you you had three businesses so far. You restarted three times. Oh, yeah. You go at least 1099 in between, right? Got to make ends meet, pay bills. I wouldn't even even say necessarily. I mean, the first Mm -hmm. time, yeah. Uh, But going from the insurance agency to this, like I I didn't do anything in between. Like, okay. I just evolved to this, so to speak. Um, hmm. And that was kind of, that was kind of terrifying to be honest, because I was in a men, I was in an immense amount of debt, had to sell that prior company. Hmm. Uh, and from there kind of, I don't know, it was more like a feast or famine situation at that point. Hmm. And I knew that the only way that I was going to be able to feast was to be able to help enough people that the money came back. So that kind of just started this whole journey. Uh, And like, we've got some crazy stuff in the works coming up here soon. One of them we can't really discuss too openly on forum yet because it's not publicly available, but it should be, I mean, it's going to change an entire industry once it hits, 
Really? Yeah. And it'll be sometime, it'll be sometime 2020. Right. Nice. So that's the fun part when you get to really kind of influence things. So, um, FC, Farm Closer, right? Yep. Okay. So a little bit about, you know, programs and, because that's one of the important things that I hope for the, you know, either, you know, they have a great idea and, you know, it's just, you know, helping them with marketing funnels and lead generation kind of stuff. Uh, but it could be people like me. Like, for example, I come from a customer service background. I had no sales experience whatsoever, you know, and it well, wasn't until I found Entourage. So I've, so I've got to interrupt you on one thing. Yeah, you, do, yeah. you do have sales experience. And this is one of the biggest things why I like Grant Cardone's old teachings. Mm-hmm. Everybody is always selling. You're just not constituting it as a sale. Right. When you pick somebody up at a bar, you're selling yourself. Right. When you make a new friend, you're selling yourself. When you go apply for a new job, you're selling yourself. When you try to pick up a product, a car, a stove, a house, you're selling. The only difference is you're not getting paid for it right now. Exactly. Jeff told me that at at Mastermind. He's like, do you have a girlfriend? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, girlfriend, fiance, two kids. You're a salesman. Yeah, you, <laughs> you sold your ass there. off. You just, <laughs> you just, she's there. You're going to have kids. You know, you have to sell yourself. <laughs> uh-huh. So you made me laugh doing that. It's like, but it's true. You're always selling. <laughs> Everybody always is. It's right. why I find it funny when somebody comes up and they're like, well, I can't sell anything. It's, it, I don't right. know how to sell. You've been doing it your whole right. goddamn <laughs> life. Yes, you You're know how to You're selling me right it. now that you can't <laughs> sell. You know? Exactly, I, yeah. You know? You're trying to sell the pitch to me that you can't sell. <laughs> You're doing it right now. Yeah. Right now, <laughs> as you live and speak. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's the thing. Also, the thing, too, is, you know, um, just the availability of programs. Yeah, you know. You know, we're constantly selling and, and, you know, there's entrepreneurs galore, you know, who've never touched a program and are successful because of that fact that we're always selling. Um, mm-hmm. But like I said, you know, one of the things that, that, that keeps triggering in my mind is you're talking about in your journey and your happiness. Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, one of the things I'm involved with now is, is Cody Rain and, and the Mantis Masterclass. And that's a core theme, you know, success is really about your happiness. How do I? You know, how do if I you're this, happy, how do I make this do what I want? There we go. <laughs> you know, if you're happy, you're a successful person. It's about your mindset and developing your mindset into a positive state, and you know, developing things like optimism and you know what I mean. That way, you can kind of like like I was just doing a like I was telling you, I was just doing a virtual sales letter with Easy VSL, you know, and that was the theme. You know, you 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 yeah. you have to have a positive life mindset because you can't really separate the two you know you can't be you know negative in your in your life world and your family let's say and then be a positive businessman they don't line up very well you know yeah. and then optimism you know where where you know you know you don't quit you know you pivot you know you you, you know it's like you know one of the documents i was reading to do the sales letter was talking about how um Lose my thought. You know your optimism. You know when you when you, you you know a client calls and says they're either selling the business or or retiring. You know it's your optimism, that ability to step out of the box, that's going to get you the referral to the new business owner, or you know you can go buy out it. and find new business, <clears throat> or you know? buy it. <laughs> yeah, you know maybe that's you give them a better offer. You know what I'm saying it's all these different things that optimism and positive mindset. You know, if if you if you're all negative about it, you're just gonna go and cry and get milk. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I just lost a client, he's great forty percent of my income. <laughs> you know? Well and I, I think that's I th- so there's two things that I really like that, that Jeff mm-hmm. has helped me with. And he's he's one of my coaches, Jeff Ducharme. Right. Fabulous guy. Uh, you want to butcher his name. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad and, that way. <laughs> no, he's he's been great. It's been a pleasure yeah. being being one of his students and getting to know him and become friends with him. Uh, but there's two things that that he's told me that really kind of stick with you. And the first the first uh, of those is the we're talking about mindset and we're talking about like getting hit and, and making things happen. And he's helping me with some stuff that we've been going through. And one of the first things he says is, I don't give a shit about the numbers right now. 
Mm -hmm. I care about one thing. And so does anybody else that's going to listen or see this. They care about the fact that you can be hit as many goddamn times as you can, and you're going to figure a way to make that work. If you can overcome an objection, that's what I care about. And he puts it into an example. And he's like, let's say you're pitching an investor, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And he's like, any, any experienced investor is going to want to see a number, but they're, that's going to be maybe one to 5% of the entire time they're going to listen to you because they really don't give a shit about that. If the math makes sense at face value, the math makes sense. What they care about is that if on Tuesday night at 11.59 p.m. shit hits the fan and you lose $50 million for something that you're holding, that you're going to figure out how to fix that that week. That's right. what they care about. And <clears throat> so it is really kind of that mindset shift. Right. And it's kind of a funny self-realization. I was talking to, I was on Tate's podcast yesterday uh, and we were talking about this a little bit. And on that podcast, we mindset came up and I had brought up, I'm like, it's kind of a funny realization when you recognize that stuff you're going through today that just seems like day-to-day -day normal challenges, FOA stuff that you're going through right. would have made you shut down completely two years ago. And so it's kind of a weird, it's, it, we don't, we don't have the ability as people in society to change everything that happens to us. We have the ability to change how we react to it. Okay. And so it's kind of weird when you recognize that and you're like, holy crap, you're right. My mindset has completely changed. <laughs> and hopefully for the better, right? Cause you know, it could go, you know, be sometimes it's 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 such a slow kind of thing sometimes i think that you don't even realize it you know absolutely but marshall silver says one thing that that's really resonated with me and i think it fits here right you're right it is a slow process but what marshall silver says is everything that happens happens for a reason and it serves you that doesn't mean it's good it right. just means that it serves you it serves you as in lessons learned, right? It might be mm -hmm. a bad lesson. It might be a bad thing that happened, but you can always learn from it and move forward. Yeah. You know, I think that's the same thing too with mindset. You know what I mean? If you, if you, if you have a positive mindset, that's where that happens. No, what'd you say? No, I think, I think that's a really good way to go about it. Uh, I forget who it was, uh, but it's, it actually inspired my leave behind because my leave behind, I got tattooed on my arm. It's what I write in all my sales letters. It's how I end pitches. And my leave behind is you're made to thrive, not just survive. Right. And what inspired that was uh, a quote. Who the hell told it to me? I don't think it was Marshall, but it was at one of his groups. Mm -hmm. I think it was the first time I went to turning point. Uh, but all it said is we don't create abundance. Abundance is always there. We create limitations. <clears throat> Limit your abundance, right? What was that? That limits your abundance or your, yeah, your access to it. Okay, and, and when you actually think about it, like, mm -hmm. for instance, if, you take, if you're like a money guy, right? Like you want to see money and you look at the national GDP any year, there's more money in the United States than any, anybody could ever spend if you distributed it e evenly over all Americans, okay? Really? Like you, the average American would not be able to spend the amount of money that you could evenly distribute GDP over <laughs> just, just in a given year. Yeah. The money's there. There's no lack of money. There's no lack of opportunity. Right. There's lack of maybe ambition, lack of knowledge, lack of opportunity, lack of scenario, lack of drive there are other limiting factors, whether that be socioeconomics or that be hardships, whatever that may be, that's a limiting factor that you're contributing to yourself. Right. But it's not just the opportunity. The opportunity is there. How are you going to get to it? It's the, the mindset component. Right. Right. <laughs> hmm. So let's say for the, you know, like I said, the nine to five, what would we say would be the formula of that for them? Don't go home and waste the, your evening. Right. If you okay. have a dream or a passion and you go home and you bitch and complain about where you're working and you do nothing to change it, you're the problem. If you're a top player on Fortnite, 
Well, no, that may be <laughs> that may be your thing. If you're the top right. player on Fortnite and you're crushing it, keep right. crushing it. Start a Twitch stream. Start a YouTube live channel. Right. I mean, Mr. Beast. Oh, but those are stuff that you could do to kind of, you know what I'm saying? Because once you get into YouTube, there's a whole monetization part that you could probably make a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Beast, like that, Mr. Beast alone makes something like 700 to 11 million, like 700,000 to like 11 million a year just on his YouTube channel from like prank videos. Really? It, it it doesn't have to be like well, that's you the don't reason have... why I'm on YouTube live. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I want to make sure that everybody you know? understands this. When I say if you go home and you waste your evening, it, you determine what wastes that. Okay. To me, sitting home and playing video games would be a waste of my time. I'm not good at them enough to ever make money from them. Right. But if you are an avid gamer and you are very talented or proficient at them enough that you could rank in tournament that could be a good use of your time you could monetize but i'm talking that. about the guy that just that's all he does <clears throat> no he but doesn't know he doesn't know the backbone like it? even i would show my son I, I was connecting this one time and there, there's there's actually on facebook when you do facebook mm-hmm. live yeah you can connect your 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 game stream to the yeah. Facebook Live. So, like, you know, instead of me and you, one would be me, and the other would be the output for my Xbox, yeah. which I thought was pretty cool. But, you know, that's just in a tech sense, you know. I'm talking about the guy that, you know, like I said, there's plenty of guys, you know, that, that my son plays with that, you know, their parents dump big dollars into their video gaming, okay? And they are, you know, like on leaderboards. But that's yeah, where it so stops. You know what I'm saying? If it stops there. But why does it? Right. Mindset. Cause while, cause while they're exactly it's mindset. Cause while they're doing that, that may be their escape. Right. But it's a poor use of time unless you're trying to do something valuable with it. Whether that value creates a monetary return or not is up to you. What type of return do you want to get? Yeah. Most people it's monetary cause they want to leave their nine to five. If that's monetary, start a Twitch channel, start a YouTube channel, start a Facebook live channel, start a gaming syndicate, start going into tournaments. If that's what you do and you're good at it, you can right. turn your hobby into your life. And that's really the point. You know what I'm saying? Why, why should you, you know, one, you know, menial tasks that are generally out there when you talk about jobs, you're really not going to you know, be able to monetize unless you can, you know, open a warehouse or something and, you know, sell space. Okay. Mm-hmm. But like, for example, even my son, my, my, my nine-year-old, you know, he, he talks all the time. He wants a YouTube channel, you know, and that's Talking what he wants power to do. To him. Yeah. I mean, uh, thank God, you know, he's not just, <laughs> you know, playing Fortnite and, and, you know, murdering his enemies. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's thinking, you know, it'd be really cool to have a YouTube channel and make some money. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I mean, first, one I was two... like, first I was like, you know what? And like, you know, let's get some perspective. <laughs> okay. You know, your life on YouTube could be great, but there's people out there that make, you know, that, that the money they make on YouTube is their pocket change. You know? Yeah. Just to give them that perspective of, 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 you know, the business that's available out there. You know? Now that, that I goes... kind of set that in play, I kind of like, you know, you ready to well, that goes YouTube? back to, yeah, I mean, that goes back to abundance. I mean, right. I, th- I forget what his name was, but it was a European kid who came in like third place this last year at eSports in Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. He won $3 million. The kid's like 16. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think my son was talking about him too. He was, he was all about that, that whole uh, tournament thing. He's like, there's a big tournament going on. People making millions of dollars. Like, yeah. Play it, play it video games. Now, he, yeah. now here's kind of a funny thing to think about because, like, I used to be a big gamer throughout school, right? Mm-hmm. I still mm-hmm. remember my parents bitching about me wasting my life in front of a video game. <laughs> if I would have known fucking 20 years into the future, I'd have been like, nah, <laughs> I'm <Really>? doing this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was, my brother was a big video game player. He used to sit there. We had ColecoVision. That's how old I am. Okay. And he would say, play Zaxxon, and he'd flip it over numerous times in a night. <laughs> I, I'd sit there for a half an hour, put, you know, and I'd fall asleep because he's still yeah. going. But crazy stuff. Uh, but, but still, that's it, the point. 
Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be technology related. Right. I mean, a good friend of mine, uh, I've helped him quite a bit with, with what he's doing. He's done a ton of work for, for us, helping around the house and all that. But he decided that he wanted to start a home remodel and repair business. Right. So he started one. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. That's the point is to find your passion. And, you know, that's what you want to do. You know, like me, I like helping people. That's one of the reasons why I started this podcast like this. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, my dream is that, you know, some people come out of woodwork, you know, have questions and come on and this will be a three-way conversation, you know, and yeah, it'll be my absolutely. guest, myself, and this person and helping them to see the opportunities that are available, you know, different directions that they can go through, you know, six months later, they come back on and, you know, there's a report about how, the, how things are going, you know, yeah. stuff like that. I think it's important to note, though, mm-hmm. that there is no such thing as a get-rich-quick scheme. Okay? Mm-hmm. People try to pass it off all the time with everything. And while it is true that in a lot of those, there have been people that were wildly successful quickly, right. you need to remember that any opportunity you're going to get out what you put in. So if you slack ass and you're just sitting there wasting time, well, that's going to be what your return comes back as. It's there's no like easy button. All of a sudden million dollars falls from the sky. That's called winning the lottery and something like 90% of lottery winners go bankrupt. (laughs) Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Let's see. All right, but like I said, programs. Yeah. Uh, like I said, you know, one of the things that I'm, you know, hopeful to push, for lack of a better way of putting it, is the Mantis Masterclass. You know, it's like yeah. 10 volumes, starts with mindset, it goes into Facebook ads, copywriting, dream client, value. You know, it's all broken up for them, and we, we actually, you know, go through it with them to make sure they get the most out of it. What's your experience been with programs? I know, you know, we're both from, from Apex Entourage, right? I was saying in the first part while I was waiting that you were pushed to excellence at, it, at, it, at one time. Yeah, I'm, I'm now in Apex mentorship. Executives. Yep. Okay. The whole mentorship angle, you know, because I think people need to understand it's, it's one thing to have, you know, uh, uh, an idea that you bring in to make a business grow up. But... You know, even like, for example, Ryan, you know, Ryan is, you know, has been with Ed Milet, you know, uh, Andy Vassella, I think he's with, you know, there's a whole bunch of Frank, Frank Kern's one of Ryan's coaches, Frank 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 Kern's one of our indirect coaches, Frank's been a gangster. Mm -hmm. And and, Uh, uh, the executives, right? Yeah, so Frank isn't uh, in the executive team. So Jeff Ducharme is, um, mm-hmm. Thomas Keenan is, Ryan is, um, Andrew Amons is. Um, mm-hmm. Who are the other coaches? I know that I know I'm missing somebody, mm-hmm. or a few somebodies. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, so I don't get distracted and stick on that note. So. Yeah, I'm part of Apex Executives. Uh, It's been great so far. It's worth every penny and more easily. Uh, But I I do want to kind of recognize that you, a couple things. One, you don't have to go to like the Bentley of masterminds and courses to get value from it. First off. Uh, Second off, I'll be the first to tell you, I've learned far more from personal development personal coaches, personal courses, and mastermind groups than I ever did through school, college included. Right. And, and the reason for that, and I enjoyed college, okay? I didn't finish to get my degree. I think to this day, I'm like six credits shy of my degree because mm-hmm. uh, I left like the end of my fourth term. <laughs> Probably should have stayed the extra month or so and just done it. But, you know, hindsight. Mm-hmm the difference is it can really be described as in, in institutions. And this is why I think our education system is failing us. Okay. Like wholeheartedly, it was designed to create factory workers and replicatable people. Mm. That was its sole design. Mm. We're still using that same format today, 
Mm-hmm. School is not necessarily a place for the smart. Okay. School is a place where if you need a bunch of people to follow direction and do a task, yeah, you'll find a lot of people that do that. And there are some highly intelligent, smart people in mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. But unless you're in a specialty degree program, so like medicine or law mm-hmm. or engineering, college, right. you're really learning from people who were taught to teach this mm-hmm. four, eight, 16 years ago. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you go get the same type of programming through personal development, personal education, mm-hmm. a mastermind group, a course, one-on-one tech school, any of those, you're learning from people actively doing what you're trying to do today. Right. The education's different. Right. What I learned in marketing at BSU, while it was valuable, right. was about 20 year old shit. Right. What I've learned from Frank Kern and Ryan Stuman and uh, Dan Fleischman on stage and what some of these other guys coming in, like Billy Jean, what we've learned from working with them, studying their programs, actually masterminding with these people mm-hmm. is shit that works today. Right. Take go home and implement it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause that's one of the things, like I said, you know, I am a firm believer of that whole invest in yourself kind of aspect, you know, I'm, ready, willing and waiting, you know, to do some stuff on my own and, you know, but it's not something you got to go to, you know, some college to learn, you know, I actually have a friend, you know, the only reason why I advise him to stick with it and, you know, get that lion attitude and, you know, slay the gazelle, as Eric Thomas would put it, is because, you know, he's writing his thesis. He, He expects to have it done by February. Yeah. Get it done. Suck it up, you know, beast mode and do it. You know, but guess what? You also, you know, want to do some marketing now. You're getting involved with an affiliate program that's, you know, getting rather successful. Yeah. You got to figure out how to do both. You know, you got to have the eye of the tiger and fight, 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 fight. Because guess what? Come February, March, April, you're going to be down easy street. You know, your thesis is going to be done and you're just going to be ready to rock and roll, you know? So, you know. Just seemed like a no brainer to me when I talked to him. You know what I'm saying? It's just like this is what Eric Thomas and all them all these motivational speakers, you know, Ryan himself, you know, you know, you, you, you gotta suck it up and bust your ass like your hat, you know. You're tired, yeah. you'd rather spend time with you your <laughs> wife, but fuck your excuses. You got shit to do. Yeah. You know, get it done. You're in you're in the, the home stretch, you know. Well, and I don't, th- I don't think there ever is a home stretch, at least for me. Right. So, and everybody's well, different. Well, for this guy, to, you know. To, to mm-hmm. some people, there's a home stretch for everything. It's, it's kind of right. like their goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong. I do, have, I do have visions, plans, expectations, goals that I will achieve. And while that is exciting, it's, I don't know, I enjoy kind of the journey of this whole thing. Like, even when shit hits the fan, like, you, you've got to figure out how to fix it. Because it's not just you that's dependent on it. So how do you fix it? Well, once you fix it, then you can fix it again. You've already been through the shit. Big deal. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's like I said, that, but that's the optimism side of it. You know what I'm saying? You have that optimism in your, your life and your, your lifestyle, you know, that you pivot, you know, it's, it's, it's really not the big problem that other people would, would see it as. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, you know, you, you're talking about how you this is your third round. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, there's got to be some sort of optimism just exuding from you. You know what I'm saying? That you no, just... it's, it's stubbornness. It's 100% stubbornness. Well, yeah, there's that too. There's that too. I'm not saying it's 100% optimism, you know what I mean? But, you know what I'm saying? But there's got to be that optimism that the stubbornness is playing off of. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of mm-hmm. hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? If you, yeah. if you got that stubbornness to say, I'm not going to quit, you know, I, you know, I don't want to go back to the nine to five work workforce, you know, and just punch clock every day, which I'll be honest. I tell everybody, if you want the easy life, yes, no, stick to the clock, punch the clock, you do your eight hours, you go home. I remember my first part time job. Right? <laughs> you do overtime, right? It's why I find it funny. Uh, I, there's this meme that goes around that I forget who it is. I think it's Sam Elliott is the picture. 
uh, and it shows this person saying, I worked 40 hours this week. I'm tired. And then it's just him like drinking whiskey. And it says, I remember my first time job Mm -hmm. and uh, the first part-time job. I apologize. Uh, It makes me laugh every fucking time because the ones for everybody that's watching this, if you haven't already experienced this, you will. Okay. You're going to complain and bitch and moan about working your nine to five, whether it be five hours or 40 hours a week, and you're going to be tired. Right. And then the second you start doing your own thing, you're going to be working like 120 hours a week and be totally cool with it. Even though you just worked three times as fucking much <laughs> than you would have when you worked for somebody else. And right. And it's, then you wake up and say, I need a nose <laughs> to get through the day. You know? Yeah. And then you wake up and you're totally surviving off of caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> but you're loving it, though. That's the point. You're happy. You know what I'm saying? It's not that, you know, like Fred Flintstone, I remember when I was a kid, they used to have that episode where he's working overtime and he's, you know, got the two picks in his eyes. Yeah. Up, you know, and he's just like, uh, uh, you know, me and you would be like, all right, yeah, put them in. These eyes got to stay open. We got shit to do. You know, you know what I mean? It's just, that's what I want people to have. You know and I, and I do I truly to. love what I do, yeah. Right, right. You know, I, I do that all the time. Like, you know, probably after this, you know, I might take a nap. Because like I said, I've been up 12, 13 hours already. Mm. You know what I mean? But it's like, a lot of times it's like, you know what? I got shit to do. You know, I got things yeah. I want to get done. You know, I got people I got to talk to, you know, prospecting and all that kind of good stuff, you know. And it just drives you, you know, you get passionate about it, right? You know? You definitely do, especially especially when you start seeing results. Like, it's, it's a weird change when mm-hmm. – because, yeah, you're going to get paid, okay? But it's it's kind of a weird change when, like – because you know that's going to happen that's not what you're looking for necessarily right your like your result is like okay for me like we do digital marketing app development content creation and mm-hmm. etc right mm-hmm. so when we build out a campaign like our excitement is as soon as it launches we're like i right, let's see how this let's see how this beast does and then when we see it get the results that we want or better than the results that we want we're like yeah that's right Right, because that we know immediately that if our client does what they're supposed to do with the opportunities that we're connecting them, it changes their entire life. Right. Where if we weren't there doing that, it wouldn't have happened. And that doesn't mean that there's not challenges. Like last night, somehow Instagram posted the complete wrong story to a client's account that had nothing to fucking do with the client. Really? That, and now we're locked out of one of their Instagram accounts because we can't figure out how to recover the thing because it's got no recovery and Instagram doesn't have customer service. I'm mad at you, Instagram. Figure your <laughs> shit out. <Okay. laughs> and so there, there are challenges that come up, but in this instance, we're just pushing content to different areas so that they still get the same tangible result. But we have to take responsibility, even though it's not our fault. We didn't build Instagram. We didn't screw up Instagram. But because we're the ones managing it, we're going to take responsibility for it and we're going to figure out how to fix it. Whether or not that means we make a new Instagram account or not is irrelevant. Right. Yeah. That's kind of where I've been. Like I said, uh, yesterday, I'm, like I got into, you know, uh, learning about uh, intent-based branding. Okay, oh, IBB. So, Good stuff. Yeah. So a lot of times uh, the, the AFID ID team, they'll go live and I'll share it on my wall. You know, just to get break into that extra, you know, exposure and have that running on my wall. Uh, I got up this morning and, you know, went and saw a new group that the AFID team put out. It was like, all right, this is cool. All of a sudden it says, your session has expired. <laughs> oh, I've been down this road. I've been having a lot of trouble with Facebook lately. Yeah, me and too. That's, I'm, what they, that's what they said. You know, they're they, messing up across the board. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, they tagged, you know, one of those live feeds as spam and locked me out until Thursday. Oh, like, Facebook jail. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm in the clink. <laughs> now, and it was just, just like one of those things. What do you do? You just know? so you're aware, you mm-hmm. sharing the team's info to your wall is not right. part of IBB. That's called the whip effect. Right. So IBB is intent-based branding, meaning that all of your content, your videos, your posts have an intent to a resolution. 
Mm-hmm. Meaning that like step one is information. Step two is value. Step three is Q and a step four is called action. Like that's an IBB sector. Okay. Whip effect is taking organic content from say group one and sharing mm-hmm. it on your profile. So you get cross exposure. Right. But it still doesn't that <clears throat> still break into the algorithm and boost it a little, let's say that's why I was thinking, just thinking algorithm one. Sort of kind of ish. Yeah. Remember, remember organics on Facebook. If we're just talking Facebook, right. organics only share to a percentage of your friend list. Right. So if you have a hundred people, let's hypothetically say that you you're running at 5% exposure, right? That's your impression count. Five people are going to see your post. Okay. So the higher your edge rank is in Facebook. So the more relevance, weight, affinity, and acuity that you get on any post, which means the faster you get shares, likes, comments, reshares, whip effect, the faster that happens, the more people see your content. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the effect it has on the original line. But that's, right? but that's not IBB. Okay. That's, that's called the, is. it's called the whip effect because when you're right. taking, you're using edge ranks algorithm to okay. take this piece of content. Okay and boost its results so more people see it. Right. What you're doing will absolutely do that. The reason it's called the whip effect is because you're whipping that mm-hmm. action so that you get that, that like think of a whip. You get the little right. flutter thing with the, with the contraction at the end because right. you're forcing more content its way. You're creating the edge rank for that content. Right. That's why it's called okay. the whip effect. <clears throat> IBB in itself, in and of itself, you can use the whip effect for, but IBB in and of itself is designed to create value ladder propositions through advertising. Okay. See, I got I to do more research on it. <laughs> so I'm an novice on it. Like I said, I've only been you know messing around with it for three months now, maybe. So there- I got a lot. They're similar, but they work in a different way. So like a good example of IBB is like, let's say you were doing a VSL, right? Mm -hmm. But rather than doing a whiteboard VSL, you were doing like a face-to-face like this. And in it, you were like, let's say that you were talking about, here's six tips. Like I'll give you a a fake example. Six tips to boost your SEO organically. Oh, by the way, before I forget, if you want to learn more about what we do and how SEO can help, go visit us here at seotips.com. So tip number one is, so you've got your pattern interrupt, you've got your content and your value drop, you've got a soft CTA because you're not going to put a CTA in the actual video, and you're going to run video and content for engagement. And that engagement's going to build your audience automatically, you're going to get market penetration, you're going to get a high edge ranking because you're utilizing their algorithm for what it is, and then you're going to get that back end so that when you hit retargeting, remarketing, content distribution, or actual calls to action, you actually have a leverage point. Hmm. That's a lot more than five cents. <laughs> <I'll be laughs> but like I said, it's it's been, you know, like I said, I... I you know, Cody's been one that's been, you know, pretty much going out yeah. several times a week. You know, we've got other guys that are on every day. Uh, and that's what happened to me. Like I said, I was they were one after the other and I was sharing them to my wall. So then like, this morning. Your handcuffs. Yeah. <laughs> See you Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think I'm finally out of Facebook jail on groups. I was in Facebook jail for like a week or two because they said I couldn't comment or share on any groups anymore because I had had done too much apparently in a short period of time and that's a problem. But (laughs) so Facebook, all I can do pretty much is Messenger. You know, Messenger still works. Anytime I try and post, like, or share, you know, like I put like and it's there for a second, then it it undoes itself. As long as you're providing value, then you're doing the right thing. Right. That's where I look at it. You know what I'm saying? It was all relevant stuff to the master class and, you know, the different, you know, mindset points that we talk about. So I wanted to get it out. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to build my list. I went from 900 to, I think, as of this morning, I was at like 3,000 and change. So, you know? so I got some people to talk to now. So, you know, yeah. Facebook, no like. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right. What do I say? So, uh, what, what do you say? Any uh, final thoughts or anything? <sighs> Comments for the nine to fivers? I think the biggest thing is going to be out. And I, I don't want to sound brash because I have to tell myself this all the time. Like, just do it. Just, <laughs> just right. go out and do it. Because worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario, let's say you put yourself out there and you absolutely tank, okay? Right. Somebody's still looking for an employee. You can always go back. Yeah, and that's absolute my thing worst too. case scenario. That's my thing too. I was talking to a buddy of mine. You know, uh, what's it him? Oh, I was talking about, you know, you know, running a program, you know, in, in a local facility we have nearby. And, you know, these are people down on their luck, you know what I'm saying? And they can't find jobs for whatever reason. You know, I said, I'd go in there. I'd love to go in there, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and show them how you can have a hundred dollar ID idea. And if you put the work in, you know, you can be making a hundred thousand dollars a year come 12 to 18 months later. Well, <clears throat> easy. And, and it's not, Facebook and like, <laughs> you could do a dollar a day. If you wanted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, me and you, we don't, that's too low for us. But, you know what I'm saying? Just as a, as a nine-to-fiver who's just got an idea and they, they, they're getting out there, one, they're not going to be able to afford guys like us right away. They're going to have to do some, some stuff their own. And you don't have to drop $20 a day. You can drop a dollar a day. And let's call a spade a spade here. It, you don't have to reinvent the wheel either. Like, you don't have right. to make a new industry to right. be successful. Like book arbitrage is a great example, right? Right. Like you can literally all book arbitrage is, is you open an Amazon store, you open up an FBA account, and then you buy books that are not prime and sell them to prime members and you make the difference in cost. That's right. all you do. You do it all day long. You right. can make like 400% margins on textbooks. Really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's so many different ways. Like, like I even saw a guy on, uh, what's a new one? Tink Tonk? Okay. Yeah, TikTok. He was coming on. He's like, you know, he's like, watch. He's like, I got $200 in my hand. He's like, watch what I do. He's like, you don't go to college. Don't do this. Don't do this. He's like, he's like, I'm going down to the outlets. He goes down to like Nike outlet down there. And there's a big sign. He's, and he huh. focuses on it. Buy one, get one free. Sell the other one. Okay. So he goes in, he buys four pairs of sneakers and he goes and puts them on eBay for 200 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he only walked in there with $200. Yeah. Right? He shows that he has a rack in his house, in his closet, all filled with sneakers that he's bought this way. And mm -hmm. he just sells them on eBay. Yeah. You know, it's like Gary Vee says, you know, one of the things that, one of the most important ones that sticks in my mind, $100,000 a year is a piece of cake these days. You just got to find your, 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 your niche. You got to find your thing. You know, then from there, you know what? Well, the, you you uh, to make a hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year. You keep your shit small. You keep within your margin. Have probably fifty to seventy-five thousand, hopefully. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in expenditures that you know that you, in the black. You yeah. Go do whatever you want. Then you go and open vein immediately. You know, and huh? you know what I'm saying, and go crazy and really, you know, start killing it. You know, you just you, this, this is just about getting your foot in the door. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be something crazy. Like yeah. it could be, it can literally be reselling other shit. <laughs> they, that's one of the big things that you see on his his channel and that uh, that Tink Tong too. You know, him going to you know garage sales yeah. and buying a box of shit for thirty dollars, and each piece is thirty, forty, fifty dollars a piece, mm -hmm. and he's putting it up on eBay. Yeah, you no, know, it's 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 not a a big project these days. You know, when I was a kid. You know, that was the advice, you know, you, you, you got to have three to five years of budget in your, in your bank One account. Thing, and think about kind mm -hmm. of the basis that, that the technologies open up. And for all you people watching, keep this in mind. We've got services that allow, like the internet's changed the game, okay? Like say you're, I've got a good friend of mine who's a fitness coach. He coaches people over the phone, over the internet. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Probably making a killing. I mean, Hillary, who's you know? doing my editing and publishing for me, mm -hmm. I've never met in person. Really? Or I have, and I just don't remember. And if I have Hillary, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at FIF, I'm sure. Right. Um, 
but I don't think I've ever met her in person. I've talked to her on the phone. I've talked to her online. Mm -hmm. I've gotten recommendations, but it's all virtual. Like I type up an outline or mm -hmm. I type up or, or set up something for her to review and right. electronically get it to her. She yeah. does her thing, gets it back to me. She lives in, I think, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm I in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the point you know like like right now you're in ohio if i remember correct right no idaho idaho you know i'm in new york i'm, e I'm even further yeah. away <laughs> really you know we've met once yeah you know it's it's a small world nowadays it is and and there is you know what i'm saying it's not really you know you gotta be you know elbow to elbow shoulder to shoulder with everybody mm -hmm. No, and you don't have to be like, I, I'm guilty of this, okay? I'll be the first mm -hmm. one to tell you. Right. I get myself caught in the paralysis of analysis far mm -hmm. more often than I want to admit. Right. But it's a thing. So like you come up with an idea and you're like, okay, we can help this many people. We can get paid this much for doing it. And then you start turning gears and get yourself caught into, oh, but what about this? What about this? What about this? Take imperfect action, Okay. Like if I can tell, if I can leave one thing behind for everybody here before we wrap up is take action, even if it's mm -hmm. imperfect. Repetition creates perfection, not non-action. Okay. <laughs> it can be the most worthless action you've ever done in your life. But if you take it, there's a positive connotation to it because you're actually doing it. And you're learning too. Yeah. And, right. and you're putting you content. As long as you don't make mistakes 50 times, uh, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Even if you are, I think, I think my fate, I think my first Facebook live, I looked like a bumbling fool. Really? <laughs> it's probably still out there. You know, and, and as far as Facebook and, and video and stuff, you know, I've only been doing this for three months. You know, I had the hardest time bringing myself to do this and be comfortable with it. It happens. You got to do it. You got to look like a fool if necessary. Nine times out of 10, you probably didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, or you think you did, and it's just you that thinks you did. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, like for my funnels. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know, I've been doing this since what 2017, 18, something like that. Yeah. You know, I never put video in my funnels because I couldn't bring myself to make the video. VSLs, bro. Yeah. You know, I never knew about that back then. <laughs> I wish I did, you know? You know, now I have both. Now I can just sit there and go on YouTube and record something and put it in a funnel. Or I can sit and take the hour and, and make a VSL for it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's, there's options, you know? Yeah. Overhead. <coughs> just as a tool to, to help you out. Because you know? mm -hmm. I know you're using easy VSL. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple tools out there that I can share with you. To right. get voice to get voiceovers done, so you right. don't have to do your own voiceovers. Okay, that's the IBM Watson thing, right? Maybe. Yeah, IBM Watson's one of them. Uh, yeah. But you can do like Adobe's got one. Uh, right. Hell, Azure's got one. Uh, but there's even some websites out there where you can just hire voiceover talent, like virtually, okay. and get it done. So rather than an hour to create a VSL, it's like five minutes and an email. <laughs> I did that once with Fiverr. I think I paid one hundred thirty dollars for it. Oh, that's I don't <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever hire voice talent yeah. off of Fiverr. Yeah. But I don't. Here's I never used it too, so that's the saddest part of it. You know, I, I don't move past the model. I don't hire off of Fiverr Upwork. No. I think there's a place in the market for it, mm -hmm. but when a client hires me and my company, they expect a certain quality of work. And that quality of work, we can't get from participants that are on Fiverr and Upwork. Right. Yeah. No, no, this was personal stuff. So, you know, it was just, you know, a way of filling up that spot on the funnel. You know, and truth be yeah. told, I never, I never used it once. You know, so it was just something on my, my Schedule C. You know, and that's yeah. all it ended up being. You know? <laughs> but that was a hard one, too, because it was like, mm. You know, it's like probably a month or two later that I'm like, you know what? I'm probably never going to use this. I had to get it attached. I, I, I didn't even get yeah. it attached to the video that it was supposed to go to. Oh. Just, things just change, you know, that rapidly that I, I, I had moved past it already by the time I was ready to do it. Yeah. But, 
These I've are the mistakes couple, we're talking about, right? You I've know, got that a couple, that's a hundred and thirty dollar mistake. You know, for me, that's a lot of money. You know, to make a mistake with. But I, hell, I've got a couple of VSLs that I've never used. Right. <laughs> you know. Like for one, example, I, I have easy VSL. I, I, I don't particularly like it. You know, I just spent an hour, two hour and a half, putting together a sales letter. Huh? Eh, it's okay. There's <laughs> no. one. There is one tool in Easy VSL that I really like. Yeah. Now it's not the only tool that does it. It just makes it the quickest. Right. It's IBM Watson plugin for voice mm-hmm. syndication is the tits. Okay. Really? <laughs> Yeah, because if you have a good quality audio overlay, so say you do this and you record the video and you're following the same word track that is in your VSL, with the push of a button, you can syndicate and match the words on the screen to your voice. To your slides, right? Rather than me having to go in page by page by page by page. And even Azure, their, their AI lets you do it too. Mm-hmm. through a different tool easy vsl is just the quickest at it so oh, yeah. it's that's the that's the format of it that i like other than that it's basically just a shitty powerpoint creator <laughs> really yeah that's my point too that's one of the things i like about it because you know for the same price i could have gotten a program called doodle that would have had you know a cool little hang going through and scribbling out the text for, the, for each slide it's the same thing. But, then the, same then there's Toonly and Wondershare right. and Filmora and Sketch mm-hmm. Pro and right. there's a bunch of them. It's just, yeah. it's just whatever you want to use. Like personally, right. I prefer VSLs over mm-hmm. Doodle videos, right? Uh, just because they convert better. But right, I'll do that. Okay, maybe I'll stick with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, this is gonna blow your mind and everybody watching. Remember this, right? As mm-hmm. fancy as you want to be, as colorful as you want to be, as ideological as you want to be, mm-hmm. historically speaking, statistically, black mm-hmm. font on white, white background converts like 30% better than everything else. I'll have to look up yeah. the actual stat. Me and Jeff were talking about this the other day, but it's like a, it's not a small jump. It's not like the difference between like 7% and 8%. Mm-hmm. It's like the difference between 7% and 20%. Okay? <laughs> like, it's a big conversion difference. Because it's not distracting. Right. And exactly. That's something I've always done with my funnels. My funnels are all white background, black lettering. You know, I even make sure that I use a sand font, you know, just for that, you know, copywriting edge, you know, that ease on the eye and to be able to read more of it. Because, you know, that's the thing too. If you have fancy fonts, you know, in your copy, then they're sitting there going like this. Oh my God, my eyes are killing me, you know? So you use the, the proper font so that it's easier. They read more of it, you know, and stuff like that. I never really, you know, went super, super fancy, you know, on a funnel, you know, and everybody and, talks about it. The people I talk to, they're like, why do you use phone sites? Because it's the simplest one out there. Because it know? works. I, it works. I get a white font, a, a white background, you know, I can put pictures, I can put video. And if I want to get crazy, I just got to get the code for the custom code field. Now, now I use... Let's see. We use Instasites, mm-hmm. IPs, Click Funnels, mm-hmm. Phone right. Sites. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Captura. I think a couple other ones. We use like six or seven different platforms. Hell, I've got PHP funnels that I've made that are literally source code. Right. Uh, phone Sites is the easiest for like lead gen. If if right. that's what you want to do, if you need leads, right. Phone sites is a fabulous resource. Yeah. It's uncomplicated. You know, when you're looking for leads, that's generally and, how I feel. You want uncomplicated. And it's the yeah. only one that I can do it on my cell phone. Right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, yeah, this is, you know, hopefully in the, in the future, you know, I'm going to have lead pages and, you know, I'll have all of them, you know, as they're applicable. You know, but, you know, to start off and just to get a message out there and put an offer <clears> in front of somebody... Well, and it yes. depends. Keep it simple. You know? Yeah, and it depends on what you're doing. Like, right? Mm-hmm. This isn't something you can do it in phone sites. Okay. Right. First off, I want to be very clear. You can do it. Mm-hmm. I don't do this portion in phone sites because I don't mm-hmm. have all the material on my phone, which is where right. I usually make my phone sites. Mm-hmm. So for things that are overly complicated, like four to 11 step series OTO and SLO funnels with like 
free plus shipping offers and back end mm-hmm. captures and right. bump offers and cross sells. Like those I typically make in click funnels or something else. But those aren't for lead gen. Those aren't for your direct to consumer. Those aren't for necessarily client acquisition. Those lead are magnets. for like right? Yeah, they're not lead that's magnets. One of, that's what I really do with phone sites nowadays. You know, it's a lead magnet. You know, give me your information. I'll send you a zip file with some cool information for you for free. You know, yeah, lead you lead magnets, client acquisition, uh, mm-hmm. recruiting, questionnaires, surveys. Those are fabulous on it. But right. if you're mm-hmm. like, if you're, I wouldn't try to sell a digital course in phone sites. Right. <clears throat> you could. I just don't want to put that much custom code on something. <laughs> yeah, that's and but that's what all you would need. You could. Yeah, do all, all you, you know, need you is just, a custom code. Right. You, you, you absolutely. Even, you absolutely you could steal can. that from 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 click funnels if you had the account it would be easier just to publish the click funnels but you know you put the embedded code right into right into phone sites yeah you absolutely could you know? it's just, it, it's just for me and and everybody's different but for me i use phone sites on my phone right. that's why i like it so much when i'm doing click funnels i'm on a computer i already have all the shit on my computer why not just put it there yeah you know but yeah i use I use phone sites on the on the web on my computer too because my eyes are getting old. Well, and I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah, they, there's power to them. It kind of depends right. how you do it. Everybody's yeah. different. Like yeah. to me, one of the reasons why ClickFunnels pisses me off all the time mm-hmm. is because half the fucking time it doesn't work. Really, <laughs> really, I've never many, had that problem with phone sites. How the many times? Ta- how many uh, times have you seen a ClickFunnels link where you click it? Uh-huh. And it says, oops, something went wrong. This doesn't normally happen, but, <laughs> but happens all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, you're a, you're a multi-million dollar company. Fix right. your fucking server. <laughs> you're charging me $200 a month for this crap, man. This should not be happening. <laughs> you know? which, which is crazy because I do like their tool. It's a yeah. good tool. It's they not, partic- nice sites. They it's not particularly nice easy to use. Mm-hmm. Like a newcomer, somebody who doesn't know jack about any internet stuff would be far more suited to using phone sites to build out pages than they would click funnels yeah but every like i said every tool has its use 100 you, know? yeah. you want a nice easy great going tool multi-tool multitasking tool uh-huh. you know me that's phone sites and but, it, and that's for everything yeah, yeah. Like i like i like a weber for email far more than i like right. mailchimp right Mailchimp's a piece of crap, if you ask me. It works great. The SMTP is right. good, but the user, the user interface, the UX is atrocious. Really? Yeah. It's I've been not, trying to get you know my CRM a list from my CRM to go into click from uh, into Mailchimp. You but know? it's the same. It, like, let's talk CRMs. Everybody's mm-hmm. heard the the word Confusionsoft, right? Right. Infusionsoft is a very powerful tool. Really. You can run an in, you can literally run a whole business from that one piece of software. Really? But it's not I, super easy to use. Right. I have pipe drive. I find the same thing. You know, I I, I haven't been on it in months because you know what I'm saying as far as its functionality for me, I gotta sit back and, you know, hit some YouTube videos and contact yeah. them and stuff like but that. But that's why really... that's why HubSpot exists. HubSpot yeah. is super easy to use. Right. Like a toddler yeah. can use HubSpot, okay? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> almost... I, need, I need to monitor emails. I need to know my, my, my open rate and stuff like that. You know, and I had zero problem figuring that out with HubSpot. Yeah. You know, I just sent out 50 emails, 100, 100 emails about, oh. you know, three weeks ago. And I still have can't find the information on, on the open rate. Yeah. You, but you it's know? different tools serve a different purpose. Right. Right. Exactly. But all right, I gotta cut it short because I gotta go and get my kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's but okay. I'm supposed worse, to you know? I'm supposed to hop on some sales calls myself, but man. Uh, That's my next project. It's gonna be some prospecting. I had a little no, man, I, I appreciate you having me on. I hope so. If yeah. anybody has any questions that's watching this, uh, easy place to find me. If you need marketing help, go to results.closemorebiz.com. Uh, if you've just got general questions, you can hit me up on Facebook. It's Bryce Vance. Uh, you'll be able to find me there. And then I know, David, you're you're willing to help these people as well. So Yeah, anytime, davidiadorno.com. You can set up 
you know, an appointment. We could do a video chat just like we do here. You know, you can call me. Just let me know that you want me to call you. Leave your number. And we'll help you out. Because like I said, my thing, you know, I hated the nine to five. You know, I was always me that too. guy that, you know, you know, everybody was like, you know, you need extra money. Just go to the 7-Eleven. That's not me. You know, I go to 7-Eleven. You know, I get passionate about it. I want to be a manager and then a district manager. No, 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 no. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I'm here. Because here are my own boss. You know, I could go make my own mistakes. If something's not working, I can fix it on the spot and move <laughs> forward. Yeah. You know, that's not really something you could do in the, in the nine-to-five world. So that's my take on why I'm here. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, yeah. contact me anytime. You know, Vance is here. Bryce is here. You know, that's something that's becoming a common, you know, thing I'm hearing with my people that I'm interviewing. Pick up the phone. Hit them on Facebook. You know? Yeah. If you have questions, if you want mm-hmm. something, let me know. Uh, if it is helpful to any of you guys, if you go to www.drivenroi.com, uh, mm-hmm. you can download a free funnel that works outline. It's like seven pages. It's a, it's an entire breakout of a funnel. It's called client acquisition mastery. Uh, you right. can go in there and it'll teach you how to build like the copy, the audience, the funnel mm-hmm. itself. It's all written down on a document. It's free. You guys right. are welcome to it. Me too. Instagram, you know, you click the link and, you know, I have an offer for a free funnel. Yeah. We're here to help. That's one of the reasons why I do this is so many people willing to help. I just had uh, Jamie Hyde. Same thing. He's like, he's he's giving out his cell phone number. He's like, just give me a call, text me, you know, we'll help you out. So. The only reason I'm not, the only reason I'm not doing my cell phone number is Mm because I've done that before. And then I got an immense amount of spam phone calls from like Mm -hmm. Bangladeshians. And I don't even know if that's a term, but I think it is. (laughs) Uh, And I'm not opposed to people calling me, but be a real person, not a robot. That's like, Hey, your healthcare's expired. No, it hasn't. I I pay the bill. Like I know when it's expired. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> I have mine. Mine, honestly, my side reason I don't mention my cell phone. It's on my page because mm-hmm. like I all said, mine's I on up, mine too. I went up to three thousand, uh, you know, followers on my my Facebook friends on my Facebook page. Yeah. All of a sudden, the phone started ringing, you know, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. just like you know, you make an appointment. I live my life by a calendar. That's one of the things I take from Ryan. You know, what I'm saying that's my accountability. Oh God, yeah. If you want to talk to me, great. Get on the calendar. You know, yeah. when you look, when you get to my calendar, you'll see different spots. You can pick what you want to talk about, or there's a 15 minute call. Or there's a 60 minute call. Yeah. Take two, take three. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's there for. All right. But all right, man, it's kitty time. All right. Well, I'm going to hop off so much. get on some sales calls. I appreciate you having me on. Let's do it again. Thank you. Definitely. Thank uh, you very much. Let me know if you need anything else. You got it. Same. Peace, brother. Bye. You got it. Bye.